throughout your career, um, how many fish in, in, in typically I'm a fisherman. So that's the one thing I think of is how many fish species do you feel like you you've kind of, uh, uh, put onto canvas and, and what are some of the favorite, uh, you know, fish that you, you work with? That's a great question That's because a very good question. I'd uh, love to hear this answer. <laughs> as, a, as a marine scientist, of course, I was exposed to a lot of fish. Uh, we dived extensively at, at both marine labs where I worked uh, in Jamaica, Port Royal, and in Discovery Bay. Um, and it wasn't until I started to to travel to paint more species, especially into the eastern tropical Pacific, uh, and that happened in the early nineties. That I, because I like to paint from nature, from having seen the fish myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very few fish I paint that I haven't actually interacted with. So I really expanded my ability, my repertoire, and of course, traveling to America to look at fish, you know, all the popular game fish like redfish and speckled trout and, um, you know, s some of the other species up there that we don't have here in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Right. Important for me to go and get reference. Then you move up to the Northeast and then you go to the Northwest. And some of those expeditions to Alaska were really amazing experiences to paint all the salmon, mm -hmm. uh, the orcas, humpbacks, seals, yes. uh, the otters, halibut. Caught a 340 pound halibut up there. Wow. Where, oh my uh, gosh. Yeah. But just to see all this, to, to, to be able to paint authentically was was part of the, the joy of, um, of what we do. And of course, as we got more serious with the scientific um, re research, they also became even more multidisciplinary in terms of deploying tags and following up and making educational documentaries about these different animals. So it was a progress, but it began in the really the, the late 80s, early 90s with trips to some amazing places. And Venezuela, for example, mm -hmm. was an amazing place to go <laughs> in the Southern Caribbean when, you know, before things went crazy down there. So, yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah, and, and I think that you brought up a good point too, is is your work is, it is very um, realistic, but beautiful at the same time, which I guess in a way, that's what nature is, is it's not, um, you know, the, the colors are very vibrant, but again, you know, when you're in the water, I look at the picture behind you, that's what it would look like. You know, you have the, the light streaming through from the surface and, and the colors of the fish. I mean, it's all realistic, but in a way, almost uh, surreal. Well, uh, and again, a painting I wouldn't normally tackle, but it's of a leatherback turtle. And I've only ever seen three ever in my life. And one was in Venezuela in this situation where we're actually diving on billfish and tuna schools. And here comes this like a thousand pound turtle. Wow. Uh, and they're no normally way. very shy. And of course, being as big as it is, a lot of uh, sardines on which the turtles, the um, sailfish and the, the tunas were all feeding, they go to it oh. for safety. It's like a, it's like a, fish aggregating device, They're hiding from <laughs> the predators. Mm -hmm. And at the top, there's some dolphin. I don't know if you want to get up and Can I maybe lower that down it? a bit. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There yeah. So uh, th there's a story behind each one. And, uh, you know, I, I paint pieces like this simply because I'd never done them before and I had the time during the pandemic to do it. But this has come out of an expedition that was 25 years ago. So, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Thank you. So, so when you start something like that, obviously you were there, you saw saw it with your own eyes, mm -hmm. yeah. but how do you go about p painting something like that? Well, well, is it a photographic it, memory? Is that what yeah, it is? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is this purely by memory or are you referencing, are you getting out the Google and you're like looking at your turtles and stuff? No, it's, it's all coming out coming out of the onboard computer. <laughs> um, again, it's a, question, it's a question I got asked many times. Well, do you paint from pictures? I take a lot of pictures. I take a lot of video because we're actually mm -hmm. there to do something else. Um, right. But of course, I do remember what I've seen and some of the expeditions we've done recently, like with the blue marlins in Costa Rica, mm, free swimming yeah. blue marlins and sailfish. That's amazing. Are, are some of the, the craziest things we've we've ever seen underwater. Because as I remind people all the time, you can't go and see these guys in an aquarium. There's no right. way to mm -hmm. reference these animals in like a zoo. You know, other terrestrial artists can spend hours, if not days or weeks, in the field in, in Africa or North America looking at their subject matter to paint. Um, and these are all great naturalists in their own right. We have seconds underwater with these animals. And so mm -hmm. you better capture it with that onboard com uh, computer. And of course, 
Unlike photography, we can, an artist, you can reenact a situation or compose your own situation. Right. And very often, like the big Marlin picture over there, it's a predator prey interaction. So you've got something happening, there's drama, there's action, there's movement. It's not just a static fish portrait.